As a fly fishing destination, New Zealand is a visual wonderland. What sets us apart, however, is the clarity of the water, allowing the angler to sight fish for the big brown and rainbow trout that inhabit these pristine waterways. This type of fly fishing is regarded by many to be the ultimate challenge. Add mice to the equation, and it quickly becomes the season of all seasons to chase monster brown trout. Myself, Jan and Leif are hiking up a river I know to hold some very large brown trout. These fish have gained tremendous size and condition this season due to the proliferation of mice in much of New Zealand's backcountry, particularly the South Island. The native beech trees have served up the largest seed drop in 75 years, with the mouse population exploding under this new food source. They cross the rivers at night en masse to find more of the nutritious seeds, and in doing so, offer themselves up as a large, protein-rich mouthful to the lurking monsters. We'll look at the first two days of our trip from each angler's perspective, starting with Leif. My name is Leif Stabmore. The first time I did pick up the fly rod, it uh, just got to me straight away, shaping loops with the fly rod and the fly line. And I knew that was, uh, it was a motion that I was just falling in love with and it was going to be a lifelong passion. So, so fly fishing has been a big part of my life. I was competition casting for many years, actually for about 12 years in the national team of Sweden, uh, both accuracy and distance casting. And uh, that made me really interested in the cast, but obviously also into fishing, because after many years of competition and training, I felt it was time to spend, uh, spend a little more of my time on the water instead of on lawns and on sport fields. What really excites me about the fishing here, if you have to pick a certain type of the fishing, would definitely be the, the type of fishing where I walk up valleys and get into the mountains. I think generally I'm a mountain person. I'm a mountain person in the winter. I love the skiing. I do a lot of alpine ski touring and a lot of downhill skiing and that also reflects where I love to be in the summer. I love having mountains around me and the further up a river I get, the closer to the headwaters, I feel the pristine wilderness that's around and that's where I just feel you know, kind of like a, a, a peace of mind and tranquility and I just love that. It's, it's very special with the sight fishing you have here and I think, in a way, a lot of Europeans haven't even discovered or explored the possibility to do the same kind of fishing back over in Europe. But people normally don't sight the fish. We look for rising fish, which actually will reveal itself, so you can target it that way. And I think most people don't put in the kilometers to search for fish like you do here when you sight fish. And that is definitely something that appeals very much to me and I also feel it's it's very much a learning curve coming here just practicing to get the skills with your eyes to see the shades to see certain reflections in the water surface it's uh, it's fantastic because it's something I mean I've been fly fishing for close to 50 years and still there's the new aspects of fly fishing that always kind of comes to you if you are willing to explore We've reached the start point for our day, and the guys quickly set up the rods in what can only be described as stunning conditions. We plan to fish two days up this wild braided river before Leif has to head home, leaving Jan and myself three more days to explore a more remote location. The sense of expectation is palpable 
as we quietly go through our final setups and carefully check our gear, as these fish will give no second chances. I was talking to a friend the other day after the first weeks here and I said this has got to be possible back home and I'm so full of excitement to go back home for our next summer and try some of what I've learned here on the trout we have back home. We have a slightly ambitious plan of landing at least one trophy brown trout over 10 pounds each. And Leif is up first with a large specimen already in sight. Leif going in to target this fish. Here we go. Although the first cast is a good one, the big brown shies away from the fly before eventually moving off. The first hint that it's not going to be easy. Oh well, fish one, us nil. It's definitely an eye opener when it comes to uh, the techniques that you use here and fishing with the likes of yourself and also with Jan Ekman is uh, for me an incredible learning curve. Uh, the way you set up your rigs is uh, very unusual to how we fish back home. Uh, I must say also this trip we did together opened my eyes much more to the entomology part of New Zealand fishing versus the European part and with your incredible knowledge about the insects it kind of put an extra level to the fishing that I've done here so far and which actually made me even more excited about the future to have those skills and that knowledge and you know that kind of interest to take with me into the fishing even further. It doesn't take long before we find another fish and he looks to be feeding well. Oh, 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 oh! Came a long way for yeah. that. The big brown chases the nymph before slowly moving back up the run and out of sight. I, I, so I, what I'm seeing from that, I reckon it's maybe leading him a little more because yeah. I think he, it was over his head still. It's about now we realise the big challenge ahead with very spooky fish. Yeah. I see one really big fish. It's a monster. The trout here seem to have an almost arrogant disregard, even disdain for the angler, and will often remain in the same spot, refusing to be tempted or even move away after dozens of seemingly perfect casts and fly changes. This enormous fish was one of those. Moving up river we find another huge brown. Leif tries a terrestrial pattern as it's midsummer, and the fish looks a few times but frustratingly refuses to be tempted to open his mouth. Soon enough, he too goes stiff before finally moving off before we can cover him with a nymph. The pressure on these trout has understandably made them very, very weary. A fast edge provides another shot, with Leith finally getting a large brown to take. And it's off the surface to boot, but painfully, the fly doesn't stick. Good luck. 
cook the dry. It's times like these when you simply have to keep going and trust that eventually the stars will align. It's a tricky little drift around the edge of a rock, but true to current form, the fish just doesn't seem interested. That's the one. Ironically, the tough times always seem to make the success you do earn all the sweeter. The hours tick by for life as the fish demonstrate just how discerning and finicky they are on this midsummer day. Still, the sun is shining and the water promising. Obviously, it was very frustrating for me. I, I mean, I, I'm in a phase of life where I've caught a lot of big fish in my life. I've, I've been salmon fishing for many, many years. So I'm used to target fairly large fish, but to target them with this kind of gear and getting the chances with fish that of the size that I had never really been in contact with before when it comes to brown trout and having those chances blown by either pulling flies out of the mouth or spooking the fish was extremely frustrating and put a lot of pressure on me over the first day and also the beginning of the second day. So when this fish actually appeared and we spotted it and it was in a good spot, it was a happy fish, yeah. I just felt that you know sooner or later luck is going to change. I just had to sort of trust my, my basic knowledge and skills I have and I know that eventually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it. It's another large brown that looks like it easily exceeds the magical 10 pound mark. And Leif is taking his time to carefully select the right fly and check his 6 pound tippet for any damage should he hook the fish. He's tied on a dry dropper rig as the fish is nymphing sporadically, not much, but enough to give us hope of finally getting the hook up. What's Several good casts with the dry dropper have gone by, with only the occasional look, until a big swing to his right gives me a hint as to what he's eating. That's Lisa Galitis. Hang on, hang on. Oh, oh. Leif quickly ties on the new mayfly nymph. also a good clear shot. The wind was a challenge but uh, I could see the fish very well and that uh, made kind of the whole scenario a little bit more comfortable for me. Uh, I had two hawk guys behind me who I knew was also going to tell me if that fish took the fly without me seeing it. But when I connected I knew that I'd connected well and I knew I set the hook nice and soft, but still hard enough to stick. 
and uh, then you go into a zone. Yeah. You don't think. No. And uh, that's what happened. And uh, I think you know over the the phase of the fight, Good. you obviously you have a few moments where you realize this or that. And the first one was actually for some reason I got my fly line tangled around my wrist and into the the velcro of my my fishing glove <laughs> just as the fish was taking off and then yeah. i remember having this this thought going through my head it's, it's gonna perfect. pop off yeah. but i managed to get the fly line out through the guides without no no hassles and uh, then the fight went off Good to finally have one that's <laughs> hanging on to the fly, eh? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Nice, oh, it's a good one. It's gonna be fighting the current, eh? Yeah. See there nice. Alright, be nice if you swam up a little more. You can even encourage about walking up with it. Yeah, try that. It did change when uh, the fish had been fighting the current for a long time and I must say this is also something that uh, I've learned over the last few weeks here that I haven't had basically the chance to practice in real life and that's fighting these big fish on such thin tippets. The good thing is you can sort of play with three quarters sort of strength at the moment. I think it was great yeah. to see the first part of the fight, knowing I was actually controlling the fish well, but he obviously had other things in mind. So I had a feeling sooner or later this fish is going to turn and uh, start hitting off downstream, which it did. The big thing with quick brownies is to always be ready for the unexpected. Down he goes, and run. Get close to him. managed to, to get him back into softer water again before the curve that was further downstream and some pretty hard and rocky water that was uh, laying there lurking down below. Yeah boy! You know when it comes to the spotting, presentation, the fight and uh, when you when you wrap all that up and you you feel uh, the success coming to you in a way. It, it is um, it is an un undescribable feeling, I think, and it was so great also to, to share it with you guys who I knew had put in so much effort for me to catch a fish like that. Mm. Mate, what a fight, what a catch. Sure was, look at this fish. That's, That's so great. It's stunning. It's probably the fish the of a lifetime for me. It's a look. Turn around to the camera, look at the back of him, yeah. down his back. Oh, yes, okay, release him, buddy. Well done. Okay, we borrowed you for a while, mate. Time for you to get off. Thanks for the ride. Oh, it's a toad, isn't it? Yeah, God. He's in a good spot there. He's probably going to sit and rest for a while. Just perfect. A lot of life. Oh man, it sure is. And it's just incredible to get these fish on like a four and a half X tippet and those small nymphs. I mean, what were we using? So size 16, probably? Yeah, it was only 16, yeah. yeah. We were swimming micron it's nymphs. Unbelievable. And really, the way you can fight these fish is to keep the buck section out and the tip is just so smooth on the rod and you don't break them off. I'm, I'm a star. Yeah, I'm just well, lost mate. for words. It was beautiful. After <laughs> having horrible luck in the morning, I mean, look at that bloody thing. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. 
Well, that's a couple of double figures. You're leaving me behind, boys. <laughs> Way to go. There's many more miles to cover, eh? There is. I was so thrilled to hear that we three were going on a trip together. And I admired you as an angler and also as a filmmaker and the inspiration you've been giving people all over the world with the stuff that you're producing. And uh, to actually be able just to walk alongside with you for those days and uh, just learn, learn, learn and observe is, is such a treat. And I must end by saying that also finding people who are very like-minded and when it comes to the river chats, the hut chats and those little things in between all the fishing, to me is that also so super meaningful and actually makes the whole fishing experience a total one and not just one about fish catching. Absolutely. Amen to that. As we settle in for the evening, we're joined by several opportunistic guests, the sheer number of which was an eye-opener as they scurried about our tents and campfire, scavenging for anything they could get. They seemed to know that extra food would be available due to our presence and weren't about to miss out. We enjoy the late night mouse show, scoff down some hot food and revel in each other's company before hitting the hay for the night. I mean, how cliche is that for a mouse to actually come and eat cheese? <laughs> He's waiting, nibbling. He'll come back for more in a minute. 